Welcome back to another episode of What's in the Night Sky for June 2020 and it's the time of year when those of us at mid to high latitudes in the northern hemisphere are experiencing a continuous twilight whereas those of us in the southern hemisphere are experiencing long dark nights. But coming up this month we are entering the peak of Milky Way core season those in the Northern Hemisphere have a chance of seeing the noctilucent clouds. We have an annular solar eclipse, a penumbral lunar eclipse, and Mercury reaches its greatest elongation. But before we deep dive into all of that, a quick message from the sponsors of today's video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creatives where millions come together to take the next step in their creative journey. There are thousands of inspiring classes covering a huge range of creative topics such as graphic design, photography, videography, freelancing and more. I'm sure many of you watching this video will appreciate Ian Norman's class on nightscapes, an incredible introduction to all things landscape astrophotography, or how about James Manning's Astronomy for Starscapes, which will help you make sense of the night sky and plan your astro photographs with ease. I've been using Skillshare for just over a year now and I've used it for all sorts of stuff. There are lots of good classes on freelancing and running a business, and also Adobe Premiere classes that help me edit these videos. Premium members get access to all of those courses and you can try as many as you like. And if you want to join along, just follow the link in the video description and you get two months completely free of Skillshare Premium. Now, taking a general look at the Northern Hemisphere night sky, we can see that Venus, which was a staple in the Western skies for the past few months, has now dipped down to the sun and is making its way to the other side of the sun. So I'll talk a little bit more about Venus shortly. But as the sun sets, we now see that instead of Venus in the western skies, we have Mercury. And this is the 4th of June when Mercury is at its greatest elongation. So this is the furthest Mercury will be from the sun, so it's the highest it will be in the sky. So at the start of the month, really good opportunity to photograph Mercury in the west-northwest. So let's go deeper into the night and as we swing across to the south I'm just going to turn on the constellations so we can see Leo is now making its way down to the western horizon he's got Virgo following behind and if we look up now Hercules is nice and high in the sky and we can look at the keystone, so these four stars make an asterism known as the keystone in Hercules. And if we zoom here, you can use the keystone to locate M13, the great cluster in Hercules. And it's generally known as the best cluster in the Northern Hemisphere night sky. So it's in a really favorable position, and even though a lot of us are stuck in a continuous twilight. Star clusters don't need that epic darkness that you'd want when you're photographing sort of distant galaxies and nebulae. So a nice target for the star trackers this month. And of course now as darkness falls, the Milky Way core is already in the south southeast. And it's probably the last month. No, it's definitely the last month now where you can have a go at this Milky Way arch panorama. Because as we go into July, the Milky Way starts going overhead and it's impossible to do uh, that kind of panorama. So as soon as darkness falls, it's your last chance now to get this panorama. Now if we keep our focus on the southeast, you can see Jupiter and Saturn there, close to the Milky Way core. Jupiter shining about minus 2.6 this month, which is pretty bright, and it's retrograding in Sagittarius. Saturn is also retrograding, it's in Capricornus and it gets a little bit brighter from 0.4 to 0.2 and then if I zoom out a little bit as the night goes on you'll see Mars rising in the east and Mars gets a little bit brighter as well, it goes from magnitude 0 to minus 0.5 and if I actually go forward a few days towards the end of the month, what you'll find is Venus rising there in the east-northeast. So Venus now becoming a morning star. It's made its way to the other side of the sun. 
and it's transitioned from evening star to morning star so it'll be a feature of the morning skies by the end of the month as for the southern hemisphere pretty similar story so you've got mercury there in the northwest after sunset and it makes its way quickly below the horizon along with gemini and then already at 20 past seven in the evening look uh, you've got the Milky Way arching overhead, the Crux almost directly overhead, the Carina Nebula, and the Milky Way core there in the southeast. Let me go to a date where the moon is out of the way. So yeah, you can see the Milky Way there looking gorgeous in the eastern skies, and of course as time goes on, it gets higher and higher. Jupiter and Saturn rise at about 8.30 nice long dark skies in the southern hemisphere and then of course later on eventually you'll see Mars rising in the east and if I go again towards the end of the month eventually you will see Venus rising there it is into the northeastern skies in front of Taurus so again it's close to Pleiades almost like we had uh, last month but not quite a transit of Pleiades going on and by the way those in the southern hemisphere also have a chance to spot the keystone within Hercules um, it crosses the northern meridian between sort of 11 and 12 so you will also have a chance to see M13 the great cluster so not quite as high in the sky for those in the southern hemisphere but at least you can still see it and then in the opposite direction in the southern skies you'll see that the small Magellanic cloud is making its way higher in the night sky as the night goes on and the large Magellanic cloud stays quite low till the early hours of the morning where it starts getting a little bit higher as for conjunctions and close approaches this month on the 8th the moon is right next to Jupiter the following day on the 9th the moon will be right next to Saturn and then a few days later it'll be right next to Mars on the 19th is a really interesting opportunity as a crescent moon and Venus are together in the morning skies and if you use a long focal length you may also be able to see that Venus is a crescent as well so you should be able to capture two crescents in the same image and it will get a really nice interesting perspective on the difference in the size of those two things now guys before I get into the special events this month I need your help because they're coming for me they're coming for us they've seen how strong this community is and they want a piece of the pie but we ain't gonna give it to them BBC Sky at Night magazine what to see in the night sky, monthly videos, exactly the same format as Witten's. It's embarrassing. I can't say I'm angry at the BBC, I'm just, just disappointed. It's pathetic. I think they can come for us. No chance. I don't think I didn't notice you, National Space Centre. These guys think they can just straight up steal the name What's in the Night Sky. Where's my lawyers? Get me my lawyers. Get my lawyers. Lawyers now. Oh, this means war, guys. This is war. And you know how you win wars? You win wars with an army. So, I need you guys to just scroll down just a little bit. Press that subscribe button. And if you don't want to miss out on these videos, tap the little bell next to it as well. And help me win this war. Because they're coming for me, guys. These corporations. They want a piece of the independent pie. We ain't gonna give it to them. <laughs> anyway, for those of us that are in the Northern Hemisphere, we experience a continuous twilight. So most people know that there's a twilight after sunset and before sunrise, but you may not know that that twilight is split into three very well-defined stages. And it's all to do with how far below the horizon the sun has gone. So when the sun hits the horizon, that is zero degrees. As it gets lower and it's between 0 and minus 6 degrees, that civil twilight between minus 6 and minus 12 degrees is called nautical twilight. And then between minus 12 and minus 18 degrees, we have astronomical twilight. 
anything lower than 18 degrees and that is official night time. That's as dark as it gets. But during June and July for somebody like me in the UK, the sun goes down, it reaches astronomical twilight and then it starts coming back up again. So we don't get that complete darkness that we'd love to have for astrophotography. So whilst it may not be the best conditions for astrophotography, it does bring about an interesting opportunity to see the noctilucent clouds. Noctilucent clouds are the highest known clouds to exist. They are 85 kilometers up in a layer of the atmosphere known as the mesosphere, and they form over the polar regions. They form when ice crystals form around dust particles. Now, because the sun doesn't get very low below the horizon during summer, they illuminate the noctilucent clouds and viewers between 45 and 60 degrees north can see them glowing against the backdrop of twilight. Noctilucent translates from Latin as night shining. Now I made an entire video dedicated to these clouds and how to photograph them, where to look. So I'm not going to go into any more detail here. Go and check out that video. Which corner? That corner? Yeah, that corner. Go and check out that video for all you need to know about seeing and photographing noctilucent clouds. Now we also have one of the most exciting events of the year. On June the 21st, there is an annular solar eclipse. So a total solar eclipse is where the moon covers the sun entirely. An annular solar eclipse is where the moon only covers the middle portion of the sun and you're basically left with a, a ring or an annulus around the moon. It's often called a ring of fire. In order to see the annular ring, you have to be on the path that runs through parts of Africa, including Central African Republic, Congo, Ethiopia, also south of Pakistan, northern India and also China. You can witness a partial solar eclipse from Southeast Europe, much of Asia, North Australia, much of Africa, and also the Pacific and Indian Oceans. But the exact time and location in the sky depends completely on where in the world you are. So I'm not going to go into much more detail. I'll put some links in the video description below and you can get some personalized information based on exactly where you are. Now solar eclipses are accompanied by two lunar eclipses. There's one on June the 5th to the 6th. There's another in July so I'll talk about that one next month but the one that's on June the 5th and the 6th is a penumbral lunar eclipse. So basically the moon passes through the penumbral region of Earth's shadow. When it does that you get basically a gradient, a sort of darkening gradient across the moon. I'm not gonna lie it's not the most exciting of events, so be careful because I have no doubt that the media are gonna blow this out of proportion. Um, but some people will be out and seeing the moon and not even realizing that there's a penumbral lunar eclipse going on. It can be neat to photograph, there will be sort of a dark shade going across the moon, um, but just keep your expectations pretty low, especially with what the media are like. And this was actually a comment on my video about how bad astronomy is in the media. The event is visible for most of the world, apart from Canada, USA, South America, also Greenland and Iceland. But again, I'll put links in the description below so you can get more personalized information on this event. Now onto the hashtag Wittens. For those of you that are new here, every month I set a subject to photograph. People upload their images to social media using the hashtag Wittens, what's in the night sky. And then I pick my favorite three. Third place wins a free copy of my Lightroom Astro Workflow presets. Second place wins a t-shirt, What's in the Night Sky t-shirt, which is now available, links down below. And first place wins a photo view photography guidebook of their choice. And there's plenty to choose from. And before the end of the year, they will also be publishing my book, Photographing the Night Sky. Now this month's subject was the moon. And of course we had lots of amazing entries from this very much loved uh, subject of the night sky. But in third place, and I'm sure a lot of you guessed that I would of course be picking a HDR moon image this month after I just released that tutorial. But did you guess that there would be a lunar eclipse HDR moon shot? So Dominic here has taken old raw files from a lunar eclipse. And he has taken that new technique that he's learned from the HDR moon tutorial that I posted uh, and created this new image and given new life to old images. So this is just awesome. This is a partial eclipse. It's not the penumbral lunar eclipse that we have this month. This is a bit of a more exciting event and you can see the red color to the darker side of the moon there. And yeah, 
This was just awesome. In second place was this image from Alid and a very nicely timed shot of a helicopter flying in front of the full moon as it rises around sunset. So it's got this really nice sort of warm glow to the moon. He's got the focus nicely on the helicopter, so well done for that. And I really love how you can see the tail rotor disturbing the air and you can see the edge of the moon looks really distorted because that tail rotor is really disturbing the air in the atmosphere and sort of diffracting the light i thought that was really really cool and then in first place was this really simple image from gbw photos i love the color palette this gorgeous twilight color palette this sort of delicate beauty of that really thin crescent moon you could just see the earth shine as well so you can see the moon in its entirety and he's done the impossible here. He's taken an image featuring telephone masts and cables that I like. I normally hate seeing these things in images, but these three have just been composed so nicely. And I just love the way the lines interact with each other and the interplay going on. And even though there's only silhouettes in the foreground, there's a great sense of depth, um, which is really, really interesting considering it's just silhouettes. And this image almost looks as if it's been taken with a film camera. It looks very analog, which gives it this really nostalgic feeling. It's very interesting. Maybe I'm just longing for the outdoors after being stuck in this lockdown uh, for so long. But I'll be in touch so you can get your photo view guidebook. So well done with that. Next month, or this month even, let's go with, let's go with Twilight. I love the colors in that image. So let's stick with the twilight theme. You can feature the moon, you can feature the planets or the International Space Station, whatever you want, but try and capture the essence of twilight. And that is it, guys. I hope you're looking forward to June. A huge shout out and a thank you to all of my supporters on Patreon for supporting this channel. And if you're going out to enjoy the night sky anytime soon, I wish you good luck and clear skies.